about our saviors this morning. Uh, welcome to those of you who are here in person. Welcome to those of you who are worshiping online. I'm Pastor Kiri. Uh, Pastor Maria is off today. If you are new to our saviors, we would love to connect with you. We have a connection card you can find on our website under connect. We also have some uh, paper copies at our welcome center that's in the rotunda couple of things to highlight today. We do have a new uh, sermon series starting called Loving Thy Neighborhood. Inside your happenings, there is a yellow insert. Do you see that I match the insert? I did, I did that on purpose. Uh-huh. Right? You like that, Becky? So you don't need it right now, but uh, we will use those during the sermon time today. And then this week, we have an uh, exciting thing coming up on Thursday evening. You are all invited to a celebration and a presentation uh, that's going to talk about our property needs at Our Saviors in 2022. It starts at 6.30. Uh, there's a social hour. We, we love getting together. So come hang out together. We've got appetizers and desserts. And then at 7.30, we'll have a presentation about an appeal we're calling Points Forward. At that time, we'll reveal how much has already been pledged with some of our advanced giving. So it's going to be a great night. Hope to see you here on Thursday night. Uh, finally, we have some, uh, we've had uh, the death of a, two members of the congregation in the past week. So Phyllis Henriksen passed away on Good Friday. Her service was here at Our Saviors on Wednesday. And then uh, just yesterday, Bernice Dornbush passed away, and her service will be, uh, it's not finalized yet, later this week, potentially Thursday or Friday, here at Our Saviors. Uh, those are all of the announcements. The rest, I encourage you to read the happenings and see what applies to you. But I invite you to stand in your places, and we'll share God's peace with one another with a smile or a wave. Please remain standing for our opening song. One, two, three, four. Once 
sin and penalty at the cross you took my place with your grace on top of grace here we go lord how you love me i don't deserve grace on top of grace more than I've asked for, more than I'm worth, grace on top of grace. How sweet the sound, once lost, now found, heaven came down, and grace rescued me. your grace on top of your grace on top of grace. Hallelujah, I am free at my sin and penalty. At the cross you took my place with your grace on top of grace. With your grace on top of grace. With your grace on top of grace. You may be seated. So we are going to learn a new song this morning. It's called A Thousand Hallelujahs. Um, and we actually, the band sang it during communion for Easter. So if you're here for Easter, you already heard it. But it's just a beautiful, beautiful song about how God's creation just can't stay silent. Um, we are made to praise him. Um, and A Thousand Hallelujahs is not enough to give him the glory that he deserves. So I'm going to have uh, Laura sing the verses, and you can join in on the chorus. Actually, you know what? I'll, I'll, let's sing the chorus now. Chuck, can you find the chorus slides? Um, and this way, we'll sing the chorus, and you can kind of join along when you feel comfortable with it. Um, then you can hear the chorus, and then we'll go back and do the whole song, and then you can sing along with us. So here's the chorus. Here we go. Two, three, four. With a thousand hallelujahs, we magnify your name. You alone deserve the glory, the honor, and the praise. Lord Jesus, this song is forever yours. A thousand hallelujahs and a thousand more. And that's how the chorus goes. So let's sing the whole song. Laura will sing the verses and you can join in when you feel comfortable. Two, three, four. Would rocks cry out to worship? Whose glory taught the stars to 
shine Perhaps creation longs to have the words to sing But this joy is mine With a thousand hallelujahs We magnify your name You alone deserve the glory The honor and the praise Lord Jesus This song is forever yours A thousand hallelujahs And a thousand more Who else would die for our redemption? Whose resurrection means a With a thousand hallelujahs, we magnify your name. You alone deserve the glory, the honor, and the praise. Lord Jesus, this song is forever yours. A thousand hallelujahs and a thousand more. Praise to the This song is forever yours A thousand hallelujahs and a thousand more A thousand hallelujahs and a thousand Let us pray. God of all creation, you created us to bring praise to your name. And a thousand hallelujahs is not enough for all the gifts and the wonders that you have given us. Open our eyes to see the beauty all around us, even when we are in unbeautiful circumstances. Remind us to praise you through the hard times as well as the good, because you are walking with us always. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. It's time for the children's message. Are there kids who want to come up? Kids are welcome to come up and you can sit on the carpet right here. I'm going to sit here today so you can kind of get right around me. Hi. Good morning. 
So I brought a game today. Has anyone played this? You know it. So I, it's been a little while since I played it. Um, and I can't quite remember the rules or how you start. If I wanted to know how to do that, what are some things we could do? You forgot? You're, you're no help. Ha, <laughs> ah, Jackson! <laughs> what could we do? Ask someone who knows. Do you think there's anything in this box that could help us? What do you typically find inside a box? Some directions. Should I look? Okay, like here's some of the pieces. Here's another thing of pieces. Oh, oh, look. Does that look like what we're looking for? The instructions. Okay, so I'll put my glasses on so I can see these. It says, um, so setting up, each player chooses a color and takes that set, and then you choose a player to go first. Does that sound like what you've done before? Oh, yeah, and we set it up kind of like that. Okay. Well, here's, I'm going to read one, a couple more rules. And then starting from a corner space, each player takes turns, and then um, cover the most squares on the board to win. What's the most, do we know what the most important rule is for this game? That was a lot of rules. Have fun. Have fun. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. <laughs> right. Well, I think that's a great answer. If we were getting ready to play this game, it would be hard to think about what exactly is the right, because we'd need all the rules to, to know how to get started and to keep playing the game. Um, Jesus was asked a similar question in the, in the gospel story that we're going to have today. The Pharisees tried to stump him. They tried to trick him. And they came and asked what the most important commandment was. Because Jesus and the Jewish people, they had the Ten Commandments, which were a big deal, and they had even more laws on top of that. And lots of rules that governed how they were supposed to live. And they wanted Jesus to mess up somehow by maybe picking one of those to be more important over the others. What did you want to say? <laughs> okay, mm-hmm. Well, as always, Jesus was too smart for them to fall into that trap. We'll come back to you in a little bit. So he narrowed the commandments down to two key things, two key things, love God and love others. And Jesus also said that we should love our neighbor as ourselves. And he said when we do these things, when we love God and love our neighbor, everything else comes into place. The other laws all hang on love. And if we truly love God, first and foremost, everything else will follow. So we know from Jesus what the most important thing is. Now, it's not always easy, right? It's not easy to always love others. Do sometimes people make you upset? Do they sometimes frustrate you? Do some of the rules, maybe sometimes at school, are they kind of ones that you don't always want to follow? Yeah, rules aren't always easy to follow. Um, we can even get frustrated with God's laws and we'll probably mess them up somehow. But Jesus knows that the greatest of all is love. The greatest of all is love. And he loved others and still loves us. Because of that, we can share his love with those around us. Well, let's close with a prayer. I want you to fold your hands and you're going to repeat after me, okay? Dear God... Thank you, Thank you for your laws. Help us to remember, us to remember. The, most the most important one, which is love. Which is love. Help, us to share Help us to share your love, your love with, those with those around us. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Okay, those of you who are going to kids' ministry can go down the middle, and Lisa's waiting for you. Those of you who are going back to sit by your parents, you can go sit with your parents again. Got it all situated now. Well, our gospel reading for today is from the book of Matthew, the 22nd chapter. 
Hearing that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, the Pharisees got together. One of them, an expert in the law, tested him with this question. Teacher, what is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. While the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them, What do you think about the Messiah? Whose son is he? The son of David, they replied. He said to them, How is it then that David, speaking by the Spirit, calls him Lord? For he says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If then David calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one could say a word in reply. And from that day on, no one dared to ask him any more questions. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Won't you please, won't you please, please won't you love the neighborhood? Well, today we're going to start with a, a quick game that will test your knowledge of TV neighbors. I'm going to give you a famous neighbor, and you tell me who lived next door. When you know the answer, just shout it out. I have to tell you, I'm not very good at this game. We'll see if you do better than I did first go around. So let's start by going all the way back to black and white TV days. Ready? The first one, Fred and Ethel live next door to Lucy and Desi. Lucy and Desi. All right. Barney and Betty Rubble were neighbors to Fred and Wilma Flintstone. How about Kramer? Seinfeld. All right, the next one, we'll give you the picture first. Lenny and Squiggy live next door to? You guys are good. You're doing very well. All right, next one, Wilson. Tim the Toolman Taylor. Laura's rocking this. <laughs> Okay, and here we go, a little bit, little bit more current. Next we have Urkel lived next to the Winslows. You all, she is carrying you all. You need to jump in and help her, man. Lots of, lots of TV. Okay, and then we have Frank and Marie next to Raymond and Deborah. Mm-hmm. And finally, for the Simpsons fans out there, Ned Flanders was next to The Simpsons. Well, well done, everyone. Most of us are pretty good at identifying famous TV neighbors. But how well do we know our real neighbors? That's where we're headed today. In uh, Inside Your Happenings, you received a handout with nine boxes on it that we're calling a neighbor map. And why don't you take that out right now? If you have a pen, get a pen handy too. There could be some in the pews in front of you. So the center box represents you or your family, and the rest of the boxes represent the people who live around you. I'm going to give you uh, one minute right now, and I want you to list the names of the people or families who live in the eight homes or apartments, maybe the farms that surround your place. So next to the word name, just do name in each box. List your closest neighbors, got it? Okay, ready, go.
Okay, done with part one. Next, I'm going to give you some time to fill out any factual information you know about your neighbors. Uh, maybe his or her occupation or hometown, where they went to school, or interests, something like that. So this should be stuff that you can't know by uh, waving as you drive by, but the stuff you've learned through casual conversations. So you're gonna list this next, on the, uh, to, next to the word facts on your map. We'll take a little bit shorter time for this, so go ahead and go. Okay, so lastly, write down what you know about your neighbor's hopes and dreams. It could be a challenge you know your neighbor is experiencing. So next to the word story, write stuff you know about them that goes deeper than just general information. Does that make sense? And go. Okay, and stop. That was only 10 seconds. And for many of us, that was way more time than we needed. I know that some of you are able to fill out more information than we gave you time for, but it can be amazing how little we know about those we live in close proximity to, our actual neighbors. And I get it. I did this exercise and felt pretty so-so when it comes to knowing my neighbors. I used to know them better, like when we moved in 11 years ago and the kids were little and would play outside with the other kids together. But then um, some of the neighbors moved and others moved in. And then it was winter and then it was the pandemic. And um, well, I haven't reached out like I wish I had. And now with some, it's been over a year and kind of awkward to do the new neighbor welcome thing at this time. So do I know my neighbors? I used to know them better, but have let that slip. Sadly, I'm more familiar with some of the TV neighbors than I am my own. Well, today we're starting this three-week series called Love Thy Neighborhood. And this series centers on a passage that we read today from Matthew 22, where an expert in religious law asks Jesus, Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? I can almost imagine every person in the crowd perking up as that question hung in the air. It's like when the chair of the Federal Reserve comments on interest rates. Well, some people tune in. If Jesus was present in the flesh today and was asked that question, wouldn't you lean in for the answer? Wouldn't you want to know what God thinks is the most important thing we can be about? Well, here is the answer Jesus gave. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment, and the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All of the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. Love God. Love your neighbor. Jesus said that's what matters most. That's the most important thing we can be about. Here's what I want us to consider today. What if we were to actually take the second half of the great commandment literally? What if we really did make loving our neighbors a priority? And I don't mean neighbors in some kind of general sense, like, you know, everyone's my neighbor. What if we applied the great commandment to the people who actually live around us? What if we loved our actual next-door neighbors? When we hear Jesus say, love your neighbor, don't we tend to think of the saying in general terms? And that's, that's legit. Like, everyone is my neighbor. We'd be right, but here's the problem. When we view ourselves as neighbors with everyone, we often end up being neighbors with no one. 
If everyone is my neighbor, I can become overwhelmed and complacent knowing that there's no possible way I could get to know and love everyone. When we're neighbors with everyone, we often end up being neighbors to no one. We aim for everything and we might hit nothing. So for the next few weeks, the challenge is to aim for something more focused, more specific. What if we were to actually take the second half of the great commandment literal and love our next door neighbors? I heard a story of uh, how about five years ago, a group of pastors in the Denver area got together to dream and pray about how their churches might serve their local community. Uh, They invited the local mayor to join them and asked him what he felt the community needed. The mayor told them this, the majority of the issues that our community is facing would be eliminated or drastically reduced if we could just figure out a way to become a community of great neighbors. I wonder what issues in our neighborhoods, in our cities, would be eliminated or reduced if we became a community of great neighbors. Here at Our Saviors, our mission statement is reaching out with a voice of hope. I have always loved how outward focused it is, how it speaks to sending us out to be God's voice of hope, right to the neighborhoods we're talking about today. So today we're talking about this vision, this dream God has for our world. Don't you think God dreams of a world where neighbors love and care for each other? Don't you think God dreams of a world where the physical, emotional, and spiritual needs of every person don't go unnoticed by those who live next to them? Don't you think God dreams of a world where children and students are safe and valued and guided by the people who live around them. What if loving our neighbors is the greatest commandment, not only because it's the right thing to do, but because it is the best strategy for renewal, for new life in this Easter season of God's dream for our world? Consider this. Do you remember the Cheers theme song? Sometimes you want to go where everybody knows your name. What would it be like to live in a place where everybody knows your name? The tagline from the cheer song became iconic because it hit on a universal truth. Every person is created to need connection, designed to pursue connection, and wired for relationship and belonging. Maybe to love your neighbor as yourself is to want that kind of belonging for our neighbors. Uh, When we look at our neighbor map, we may realize that we don't live in a place where everyone knows your name. We live in places where too often few people know our name and we don't know theirs. But what if we make an intentional effort to make a difference? A colleague of mine shared a story about Paul and Kathy, who are members of his church. They were neighbors with Wayne since they uh, moved in next door to each other in a new neighborhood 10 years prior. Now, they'd been good neighbors. They had been spending time together, sharing laughs over the years. But at one point, Paul and Kathy found Wayne on their couch. His life was falling apart. He was divorcing. He was really struggling. His emotions were terrible and overwhelming. Paul and Kathy listened, offered words of encouragement, and said they would pray for his kids and him. They continued to call and check on him as he walked through that difficult time. And in one conversation, asked if he wanted to go to church with them. Wayne was in shutdown mode and just wanted to withdraw from the world. However, he had seen God's strength in Paul and Kathy and thought maybe he could find that strength too. So he went. And now he says that it changed his life. He was embraced by that community of Christ followers, listening to songs and sermons where God's love and grace were proclaimed every week and experiencing it in the real form of bread and wine at communion did give him strength. People he met would make a point to find him before or after the service to ask how he was doing. And he became part of that church's divorce care group and found ways to move toward healing and wholeness. 
Wayne says that someday he hopes to be able to help others the way he has been helped. A friendship with his neighbors opened the door to Wayne's life being transformed. Doesn't that make you wonder what God might do through you and me if we really know the people who live next door to us? Now, just to be clear, as we go through this series, we understand that people are not projects. We love our neighbors whether or not they ever go to church. We love our neighbors whether or not they ever become Christ followers. And we aren't pitching Jesus like it's some uh, network marketing pyramid scheme. People are not projects. But at the same time, I don't know how to love my neighbors without wanting them to experience the greatest love they could ever know. I want them to know and experience the transformation Jesus brings. I want them to know what it's like to be forgiven for the ways I've fallen short in the past, to have a purpose for my present, and to live through the toughest times with a solid hope for my future. It's okay to want them to have that life. It's not a perfect life, but it is a good life, a very good life. So as we start this series, we want to invite you to join in. What if we were to take the second half of the great commandment literally and love our neighbors? So here's the challenge. There's a challenge for this week. If you don't already know, learn the neighbors of your eight, the names of your eight closest neighbors. Names are important on so many levels. Who doesn't like to hear their name? And have you ever uh, had the experience of being impressed when someone remembers your name when you're not expecting it? We are coming out of this uh, long time of co the COVID pandemic and a long, long winter, right? This is the time of year that people come out of hibernation. Let's seize the opportunity to begin loving our neighbors by simply listening and getting to know their names. Complete the name section of that neighborhood map this, map this week by learning the names of our eight closest neighbors. And then on the back, there are some questions for further thought and discussion. You can use them just with yourself or maybe your family or maybe a group you're a part of. So let's conclude by asking for God's blessing through prayer. Let's pray. Gracious God, today we are called to take serious Jesus' command to love our neighbors by loving the people who live next door. Today we bring our neighbors to you, both the names of those we know and the names we have yet to learn. Help us bless these neighbors in these next few weeks. We begin by praying for them today, and we pray for opportunities to listen to them, to eat together with them, to serve them, and to be there for them in a time of need. God, help us to love them with a love that is beyond ourselves, a love that comes from you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The next song that we're going to sing uh, is all about the two most important commandments. Uh, the first part of the song is praising God because the most important commandment is to love God. And then there's this little line in the chorus where it says, show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. And that fulfills the second commandment, which is um, love your neighbor as thyself. So um, join us in singing Build My Life. song we could ever sing worthy of all the praise we could ever bring worthy of every breath we could ever breathe we live for you Jesus 
Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. We pray for those in our neighborhoods and for all people according to how God sees their needs. Lord, send us out 
as resurrection people, ready to show your love to our neighbors. Lead us in just the right ways to create the kind of neighborhoods where people can thrive in their relationships and in their lives. Lord, we ask that you would renew our commitment to use resources responsibly and live well with your creation. Invite us to recognize and nurture signs of resurrection life in the natural world. And Lord, we pray that you would find a way, a way to bring new life to the devastating war in Ukraine. Help peace to break through and for the suffering to end. Lord, today we offer a prayer of thanksgiving, of thanksgiving on behalf of Keith Hammerbeck. He's experienced an unexpected cancer update showing no evidence of disease. It's remission. Thanks be to God for this wonderful news. And God, we pray today for your love and your courage to be present with those especially in need. We lift before you Vi Leipzig, Sarah DeYoung, Sandy Bone, Ryan DeYoung, Pat Nelson, Liz Landwer, Laverne Johnson, Dick Potsmith, Joel Jones, David Kappelhoff, Dan Hammerbeck, Colleen Bosney, Cindy Lustoff, Sherry, Sandrita, Brenda Varney, and Becky Beck. And God of grace, we ask that you would comfort those who grieve today. Especially today, we pray for the family of Phyllis Henriksen and the family of Bernice Dornbush. We also pray for Terry and Karen Bush on the death of Terry's mother, Judy. For Jared and Christy Von Dalen on the death of Jared's mother, Pauline. For the Hammerbeck and Taze families on the death of great aunt Betty. And for Lindsay Howe on the death of her great aunt Lori. All these prayers that we bring before you, Lord, we speak some and we give some to you unspoken. And we ask and trust in the power of your love and mercy through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Well, it's time for us to consider our offering to give thanks to God for these amazing gifts that God has given us. So there are uh, various ways to give. If you are here in person, you can place your offering in the baskets on the stands uh, by the doors as you leave today. And if you in, are in person or online, you can always mail in a check. You can text a dollar amount to the number on the screen or give through our website, oursaviorslc.org. Let us pray and give thanks to God for all these gifts. Loving God, you provide for our needs and gather us at your table. Bless our lives and the gifts we offer that they might be used to bless others for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Well, it's time for Holy Communion, so I invite you to uh, get your communion kits at hand. If you are at home, you can get your bread and wine or grape juice ready as we get ready to celebrate this meal that Jesus gave us to remember the life that he gives In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We join together and pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Hear these words as you open your kits and we receive the, the body and blood of Christ together. The body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you.
please stand to receive the blessing. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God of all, in this meal of love and grace, you have strengthened us. Send us into a hurting world that we might share your love with our neighbors and change the world for the better. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May the risen Lord guide your steps, fill you to overflowing with love, and grant you courage, strength, and hope. The Lord bless you now and always. Amen. One, two, three, four. <laughs>
to love your neighbor. We, we will. will. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. One, two, three, four. <laughs> The, the 